Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. We'll look at some various verses in the scripture, but we'll just get a principle out from this, from this verse. Title of today's message is called, Every Careless Word. Every careless word. Matthew chapter 12. Verse 36. It says, But I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. But I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every, every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Let's pray one more time and depend on the Lord. This, that the independent of circumstances, circumstantial reasons that will still be blessed if the Spirit of God work with, works within our hearts. Let's pray to the Lord and depend on the Lord. Okay. Father, we praise you and thank you for your grace and mercy that never ceases. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, your eternal, eternal Word. We pray that your Spirit will be here speaking to our hearts. Just move our hearts to listen to your word. We pray that you will be honored and glorified in our midst. You will be exalted. We pray that uh, you will be the focus of our, of our attention and focus of our worship. And you alone may be magnified and glorified in our midst. Speak to us so that our hearts may be enriched by your presence and by your power, and by your love, and by your encouragement. Pray that your presence will be reality within every one of us. May we not be worried and distracted, but may we focus on you sitting at your feet, loving to live at your house, in your presence. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, before we go into the message, I'd like to just introduce you two people in this sanctuary. Uh, they are missionaries from uh, Mexico. I went to Mexico for a revival meeting this uh, summer, as many of you know, and prayed for. Thank you. And uh, they are visiting here to uh, see us and visiting here to just, uh, you know, greet some of the people who went as well as, you know, to talk about the programs and things like that. And when I went to Mexico this summer, it's just some of the fantastic thing I've I've seen is they were living like uh, a representative of Christ, you know, and the life they were living in tr truly challenged me uh, uh, about my life as well as the things that I was doing in my life. So uh, I just would like to introduce to them, I don't want to embarrass them, but introduce them so that you can remember their faces and pray. Hey, you will. I, you, you know that whenever missionaries visit, I make them stand not, not to glorify them, but you will remember their faces and you'll pray for them. And these are soldiers of Christ uh, fighting in the battle line in our, in our behalf as well as for the Lord. So, Chakawan, <laughs> you're uh, Missionary Nam and his wife. Every careless word. One of, uh, I know in the small groups, many of you did this questionnaire. And you were asked about pet peeves. Okay, what are some things that 
you really don't like. Some people talked about, you know, people who cut in driving, people who, uh, you know, all kinds of things. Especially when I was talking to uh, in the servants meeting, and a lot of people share different kinds of things. One of my pet peeve is is when people don't listen. <laughs> You know, in the message, I try to get their attention. And when people don't listen, I just, you got to fight the spiritual battle. You know, somehow, you know, it's, it's a spiritual battle for you to listen to the Word of God with all the distractions. And when people don't listen, just, I don't, I don't you know, feel like talking to them, associating with them. Even in a one-to-one -one talk, you know those people who look around like that, or who sit like this, who yawn, or something like that, and... You look at them, you don't really feel, you really don't feel like talking. And those people who always forget about what you say, things they promise they always forget, they really don't listen. And those are the kind of people that I have difficult time with. Right? But when you really think about it, I think there are people who are worse than people who do not listen. You know who are, to me, who are the people who are worse than the people who doesn't listen? Who don't listen? They are the gossipers. Worse than the people who doesn't listen are the people who talk about unnecessary and useless things to others. Release of those kinds of informations that are unnecessary. Why? Because if you really think about people who doesn't listen, who don't listen, it's like this. When information goes into their ears, it goes, through the, uh, goes out through the other ear. So, at least that's okay. But what are the gossipers? Enter information. It gets mixed in here somewhere. Interpreted probably in a wrong way. And comes forth like a poison. That's gossip. The Bible says, every careless word that you speak, you'll be judged by it. Have you ever thought about that? What are some of the things you said today? <sighs> Complaints, gratitude, thankfulness. Somebody said this. Sometimes a small stream of gossip poured out into the ears emerge as a mighty cataract out of the mouth. Sometimes a small stream of gossip, when you hear something from somebody and you see everything from that perspective, it really affects somebody. It's powerful. And then comes forth, okay, emerges as a mighty cataract out of mouth. That's why James chapter 3, verse 8, it says this, But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Think about that. But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Some of you, and so myself included, we underestimate power of words. You know, words can do all kinds of things. Words can change a lot of things. Okay? Words can affect somebody to earn affection, emotion. Place yourself in their minds and hearts. Words can do a lot of things. A lot of times, words have changed the history of mankind. Word of God has changed the history okay, of eternity of so many people. We are to be His voices carrying out His Word. Jesus Christ is God's Word, living Word. Think about that. Power of words. And whenever we talk to somebody, or talk, think about somebody, talk about somebody, Think about it like this. We have right to bless or right to curse. Think about that. Whenever we complain about things or whenever we say bad things about things, negative information released out of us about concerning somebody, it's rather, it could be power to curse or power to bless. There's your choice. Okay? Whenever you talk about somebody, whenever you think about somebody, you have a power to curse or power to bless. That's a believer's blessings that we have received. We can bless or we can curse. What do you do? 
Some of you might think it's just a useless information, some things that I talk about. But there is no neutrality for Christians. Christians' words are powerful. <laughs> you look very uh, <laughs> together. I'm just, this is, are you guys okay back there? One thing I know is that these guys won't fall asleep. But praise the Lord. Uh, so what I'm not saying, words are powerful. Okay? Words are powerful. Words have many effects. Think about it like this. This is a body of Christ. Do you ever consider that other believers are body of Christ? Same part in the body of Christ. And one of the members hurt. Within the body of Christ, Christ hurts. But so many times what we do is that we hurt other people, slash other people with our words in the family of God. I can, I can talk about so many people whose lives are ruined personally, personal lives are ruined, hurt, leaving the church. Relationship, uh, relationships disassociated, uh, broken because of some careless words. The Bible says, for every careless word that you will be judged. Amen? You think about it today. I'm just going to basically talk about wrong uses of tongue. Six things about wrong uses of tongue. Four things about good uses of tongue. In the, uh, mainly from the verses of Proverbs. It is a very, very important topic. Okay? Please think about it and judge your words. Judge your, judge, your, judge your life, what you say, what you think, and what comes out of your mouth. Please think about it. And there's power in our mouth as Christians. So, first of all, let's give the bad news. Wrong uses of words. Okay? Six things. First, first, of the wrong uses of our tongue is flattery. Flattery. Proverbs 26, 20, I'll just, because we don't have time, I'll just read all these verses by myself. So you can, if you're writing notes, write notes and just listen to, listen to it as, I'm tr as I'll try to read. Proverbs 26, verse 28, it says, A lying tongue hates those it crushes. And then it says, And a flattering mouth works ruin. Flattering mouth works ruin. Two different ways to define flattery. One is insincere compliments given to gain favor. That's a flattery. Insincere compliments to gain favor. Okay. It is insincere compliment given to gain favor. It might be true fact, but it's, it's not from sincerity of your heart. It's not spontaneous. It's not for their own benefit, but it is for yourself. It is to gain favor. Another way to define, okay, not only insincere compliments given, uh, given to gain favor, but excessive undue praise is also, fla uh, also flattery. Excessive undue praise. And it might be true. It might be right. But you constantly talk about it. Praise excessively undo why so that that person can like you proverbs warns us not to use use it or to be used by it and he says in uh, chapter 26 24 and 25 he says this he who hates disguises disguises it with his lips but he lays up deceit in his heart when he speaks graciously, do not believe him. So when you really hate in your heart, you disguise with your lips. Okay? And you speak graciously as if you like him, as, you have, as, you, as if you have favor concerning that person. And scripture says, do not believe it. Why do we say those things? Because we want to manipulate. We want them to react or have certain feelings toward us 
and we want to change their feeling, we want to manipulate in, uh, without any sincerity for my sake, for my own good. Hey. So that that person can like me. When we do that, what we are doing is we give them poison. That's what we're doing. So when we talk praise or those kinds of things out of self-love, usually flattery is out of self-love. It is always out of self-love for my own sake, not for others' sake. And when we talk, about, talk to them about certain things, we feed their ego, pride, because it's, it's excessive, undue praise or insincere compliments just to gain favor we don't really think about. One or two sentences of praise that are insincerity might be good, but 10 sentences just repeating so that that person will like me, what happens is that we're feeding them ego, pride, poison. And what we are doing is flattery. Second, wrong way to use. Wrong usage of our tongue is slander and gossip. Slander and gossip. Another use of the tongue that concerns Solomon in Proverbs has to do with malicious circulation of malicious circulation of false or exaggerated reports. Malicious circulation of false or exaggerated reports about another, another person. Think about it. Malicious circulation of false or exaggerated reports about another person. Meaning, any false information concerning the person, just so that I can enjoy, just so that I can, I can be exalted. It might be out of my jealous heart. It might be so that that person can put down so that I can be exalted. Whatever reason, whether it is circulation of false or exaggerated reports, it might be just one mistake or one information, but you exaggerate because you enjoy talking about it for whatever reason, about another person, slander or gossip. Proverbs 10, 18, as well as 11, 13, 10, 18 and 11, 13 says this, he who spreads slander is a fool, a fool. He who goes about as a talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy conceals a matter. You know, you know those people who really don't tell other people's secret to you? Sometimes you think that you can't really trust them because they're not telling you any secrets about other people. Maybe secrets about them, but uh, secrets about them. What did, they, what did they say? What did they say? I don't want to tell you. Sometimes we don't like him for that, but thing is those are the trustworthy people. Even revealing the truth at times can be nothing more than a sneaky way. Think about it. I have a prayer request. Have you heard those before? I have a prayer request. And then you have a gossip session and one sentence of prayer. That's not out of love. I have a prayer request. Even revealing the truth at times can be nothing more than a sneaky way to slander someone else. A private conversation aired publicly can cause irreparable damage. Think about that. Not everything we hear should be shared. One who repeats a matter, according to Proverbs 17, verse 9, one who repeats matter separates intimate friends. Sometimes what you say about other people separates them. Maybe secretly or intentionally or unintentionally, maybe that is your intention. Okay? They are too close, so what you do? You talk to them about that person's secret. You know what that person said? Might be half-truth, might be false, might even be truth. But if your intention is to separate so that you can be close to them, be careful. Slander, gossip. A couple questions we can ask is this, right? Thinking about slander or gossip. You can ask, aren't there times when, when information ought to be given that may not, uh, that may not seem kind? Even though it may not be kind thing, can, can, I just, can I just talk about them? Yeah, at times you have to do that. At times, even though it might hurt them, you might have to talk to them about it. But it is with right motive, and it is to that person, not to other people. If it's about this person, don't talk to other people about it. Do you talk to this person? Right? 
Another question we can ask, sometimes confidential information ought to be given. Isn't it true? Confidential information. I mean, for in the cases, there are times that when somebody says, when somebody asks me, can you make sure, Pastor me, I'll tell you this, can you make sure that you will not tell anybody? And you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, no, I cannot guarantee that I will never ever tell any information that you give me. What if it's concerning some murder plot? Okay? Or something concerning suicide, child molestation, and it's ongoing thing. You know what? I can't say yes to keeping secret to those things. There are sometimes those secret information I have to say. But most likely, I, I'll probably try to keep those secrets, I mean secrets, other than those kind of things. So when you say something about other people, four questions you should think about, okay? So that it will not be slander or gossip. Okay? Four questions before we say anything, before we say something. Number one, before we say anything, just remember, is it true? Is it true? Okay? If you're not sure, don't share it. Is it true? Always ask this, how do you know it's true? If you're going to tell me about something, if you're not directly involved in it, and you exper experientially went through it, and if it's not for that person, don't share it. How do you know it's true? Number two, second question you should ask before you say something is, is it confidential? Necessarily confidential. Another question is, is it edifying? Okay. It is, is it edifying to two kinds of people? The person you're talking to, object of your conversation, as well as the person you're talking about. Is it edifying to them? Okay. Sometimes, you know, sometimes even though it may be edifying uh, to this person that I'm talking to, it might not be edifying to the person that I'm talking about. Sometimes it might be edifying to the person I'm talking about, but it might not be edifying to the person. So is it edifying? Fourth thing you should ask yourself when you, before you talk is, is it necessary? Is it necessary? If it's not necessary, usually it's not edifying. <laughs> That's what I realized. Is it necessary? Does this person need to know what I'm about to say? If it won't make any difference, it usually best left unsaid. Okay? I remember, it's just some of the unbelievable, there are some things that happen in my life, some unbelievable thing that happened. Like, I don't know, I say about seven, eight years ago when I was in seminary, somebody just Talk, was talking about me. I didn't, I didn't even know who was talking about this. And they were just spreading rumor that I was a heretic. That's basically what they said. And basically, you know, they were talking about my belief about spiritual gifts. I mean, my general theology concerning me is I'm pretty reformed. That means very common, very orthodox, biblical. You know, what the Bible says, I believe. And concerning gift issues, I believe gifts exist, but I don't emphasize too much about the gifts. I, I never almost, uh, I never outrightly preached that you have to accept it. If God, Holy Spirit gives you, great. Let's use it. Okay. Biblically, I'm, I'm allowing uh, spiritual gift to, uh, I, I believe spiritual gifts exist in the church and in the body of Christ and all these things. But my philosophy is not you, unless you receive the gift of Holy, gift of Holy Spirit or gift of tongue or something, like that, then you're not saved. My belief is not like that. And this person was basically saying, I'm saying things like that. But that person never directly talked to me what my belief was. So I don't remember that many people that I talked about these things either. So basically he's speculating what he thinks I believe. And then he was spreading rumor everywhere and he would even drive to some other city that I was going to go revivaling, revival meeting and speak to. He would drive to those places and would stop me from going. <laughs> so fervent about that was his mission or something. I have no idea why. 
but that person never talked to me about what I believe. Now you may say, wow, you know, that's, I'm, I never do that, but you really think about yourself. Okay? What kind of information do you share? There are times that even between ministries, even between the churches, that we will slander. When you talk about other ministries, do you, do you talk down? Like if somebody were to ask, how's this organization? How's that organization? How's CFC? And if you're gung-ho CFC guy, oh, other organization. You kind of, you don't really want to say bad things, but you talk down on it a little bit. Oh, about CFC. But then again, some other organizations do that as well. Let me say this. Never, ever, 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 ever talk negative things about other churches, other, organi other organizations. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We should pray for every organization in this campus. Every Sunday morning as I prepare messages, I go to my office when I'm dark. Well, not when I'm dark. When it's dark. <laughs> when it's dark outside, I, I go Sunday morning and just, just thinking about the message and praying for the message. And you know, in my office, I can see whole Champaign-Urbana area. I look at him, I, like Moses lifting a staff or something. <laughs> I lift my hands and say, Lord, cover over this town with your spirit. Let every preacher preach with fire of the Holy Spirit. We need to have attitude of brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? Never ever slander against any organizations. How do you know if it's true? Ask those questions when you slander, gossip, talk about other people. Right? Third way, third misuse, third misusage of our tongue is argument or angry words. Argument or angry words. We always want to win. Okay? And when we want to do that, we get angry. Why do we get anger angry? Because we want to win the argument. We want to be exalted over other people. That's why we argue. That's why we get angry. It's a pride thing. Okay? Has someone ever verbally given you a black eye? You know what I mean? Boom! Oh, you feel like you were slapped. That kind of feeling. Okay. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 6 and 7 said this. A fool's lips bring strife. And his mouth calls for blows. It's like a boxing match. It's a boxing language. A fool's lips bring strife and his mouth calls for blows. A fool's mouth is his ruin and his lips are the snare of his soul. Are you that kind of person? Okay. There, are, there are two kinds of people. People who do it with their thoughts and people who do it with their mouth. The result is the same for our hearts. I think I'm the kind of person who would do it with my mouth because I can talk. That's my job. You know? So when I argue with people, I can talk. Some of you are like that and some of you are thought fighters. You picture beating them and you know, <laughs> pulling their nose hair or something like that. You think about these things. Okay? But we do it. We do it. We want to win an argument. We are angry words. Chapter 29 of Proverbs, verse 22, Proverbs 29, 22 says this. An angry man stirs up strife, and a hot-tempered man abounds in transgression. An angry man stirs up strife, and a hot-tempered man abounds in transgressions. So what do you do when you are thrown in a ring with such a person? In classroom or in at home, in the apartment, or church, small group, hopefully not in your small group or places like that. But what if you are in the, thrown into that ring? Okay, you are about to get, get, get into the boxing match of your words. Okay? I think Scripture gives two kinds of advices. And number one is, it takes two to fight. Okay? It takes two to fight. Just get away from this situation. Proverbs 17 verse 14 says that. The beginning of strife is like letting out water. So abandon the quarrel, it says. Abandon the quarrel before it breaks out. B 
best thing to do with those people who wants to get into a boxing match of their words is that get away okay before it starts so abandon the quarrel before it breaks out it takes two to fight so the moment you sense that where your conversation is headed walk away okay? don't get into the ring refuse to mix up by trading verbal punches another advice to those people who have angry words or arguments is this mentioned in uh, Proverbs 22 verse 24 and 25 Proverbs 22 24 and 25 do not associate with a man given to anger do not associate with a man given to anger or go with a hot-tempered man lest you learn his ways meaning if you're with an angry person you become like that you get angry whether it's through your minds or with your mouth you become like that so when you meet someone who blasts out anger in a stream of those hurting words keep going pass them okay? don't pursue a relationship with this kind of person especially when you date <laughs> when you meet an angry person it's really difficult to deal with and that kind of habit will a lot of times last life unless spirit of God intervenes and works if you talk to them and talk to their parents that opposite gender's parents and one of them are very angry person most likely a lot of times not all the not all the time but a lot of times it'll be there if your parents are like that a lot of times you will be like that too anger is like an energy when they release it it goes to you <laughs> you know don't associate scripture says with those people don't associate with angry people lest you be like that okay. fourth wrong way to use our tongue is boasting and foolish talk boasting and foolish talk the fool, the fool feels compelled to comment on everything. You know those people <laughs> who wants to comment on everything? Their words flow in an incessant cascade of bubbling babble. Somebody said that. <laughs> incessant cascade of bubbling babble. That signifies nothing. They just keep on talking about it. It really means nothing. He always jockeys for a coveted position of having the last word. You know those people who just have to have last word? And the first. And most everything in between. <laughs> you know those people? Just boasting and foolish talk. But not the wise, Scripture says. Proverbs 17, 27 and 28 says this. Proverbs 17. Verse 28, 7 and 28. He who restrains his words has knowledge. He who has a cool spirit, cool spirit, I like that. Cool spirit is a man of understanding. Even a fool, when he keeps silent, is considered wise. You all look wise. <laughs> At least in the service. Right? Even a fool, when he keeps silent, is considered wise. So if you just stay quiet and say nothing, at least you're in the middle ground somewhere. But you start talking, you're boasting about your foolishness, ignorance. Right? When he closes his lips, he is counted prudent. Right? There are a few, few, way, few uh, boasting and foolish talks. I think uh, three things under this point. First is foolish jesting or joke, foolish joke, mocking remarks and things like that. Proverbs 17 verse 5, it says, He who mocks the poor, poor reproaches his maker. He who rejoices at calamity will not go unpunished. These days many comedians, when you see television, males and females, and constantly tell sick jokes about misfortune of others. Okay? They love to make... Uh, fun of adultery, poverty, murder, all these kinds of things. And we would not buy, we should not buy into this, but the thing is we laugh at some of these things. When it's not, when they are saying something against the Bible, don't laugh. 
You're not, I mean, you don't have to say, hey, that's wrong, that's sin. You, maybe you don't have to say that, but you judge. And if it's not a joke that is, that is edifying, don't laugh. Another foolish talk is uh, imp talking out of impulsiveness. It, foolish talk, boasting and foolish talk involves impulsiveness. Proverbs 18 verse 13 says this, He who gives an answer before he hears, he who gives answer before he hears, it is folly and shame to him. You know those people? You know, a couple things. You know those people who don't really listen to you and then give all the advices was well, the wrong thing? Or, you know those people who, before you finish, say something, they always finish the sentence for you. <laughs> I know, I'm like, because my mind can catch, like, quick thinkers. There are two kinds of people, quick thinkers and deep thinkers. Deep thinkers are the kind of people, when you talk to them, you talk to them, you finish talking, and they sit there and go, hmm. <laughs> and it takes them 10 minutes to say one thing. They're deep thinkers. Quick thinkers, when you start to say something, well, that means, ah, that means, ah, blah, 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 finish the sentence for you. And then you start to, what I meant was, ah, blah, 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 blah. quick thinkers, and I'm more of a quick thinker than deep thinker. And some of, more in, uh, some of you are more, uh, deep thinkers. But fools, according to this verse, he who gives an answer before he hears, it is folly and shame to learn to listen. See? Learn to, when you learn to listen, not only the content of what I'm saying, sometimes you listen to the content of what I'm saying, you think you heard everything, but that's not true. Sometimes, when, even though you know the content, just finish listening to their expression. You know what, them, what happens then? Not only you understand what they're saying, but you know you understand how they feel. Do you know what I'm talking about? When you finish listening, according to how much they want to express, you understand, you, you, understand, you may understand, oh, this person is hurting. Man, but not only you understand this person is hurting, when you finish, when you let them finish, them, the, uh, finish so that they would express themselves, then what happens is that you understand how deeply this person is hurting. Then you can feel what that person feels and have compassion. And you might be saying the same thing you would have said 10 minutes ago, but after 10 minutes, when you say with feelings from your heart, what happens is that it'll have power in your words. Okay. Another foolish way of speaking, boasting, and is still under boasting and foolish talking, is Proverbs 25, verse 14. It's, it's just boasting about ourselves. Whenever we say our intention behind might be boasting, either to hide yourself or boast yourself. To, uh, Proverbs 25, verse 14, it says, Like clouds and wind without rain is a man who boasts of his gifts fa falsely. I think about myself. I'm, I'm, think, I'm talking about myself a lot, sorry. I'm talking about myself because I can think about how foolish I am. Uh, or I was all my life and I, I am still in, in the process of being corrected, but still in, in a way. But I think about myself and, you know, because of the probably lack of affirmation I received as I was growing up. You know, lack of affirmation. I guess a lot of the things that I was saying was to receive affirmation. Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe some of you are like that. Hey, you show so that you can, people can realize how good you are, how high you are, how okay you are, or how at least you are not like you look or something like that. And you try to boast about yourself, exalt yourself. Hey, a lot of times, why am I saying this? I have to catch myself. Why am I saying it? It seems like I'm saying it to boast myself. You have to catch yourself. When you say something, it's, it's not to exalt yourself or cover yourself. It ought to be out of love, edification, honesty, vulnerability, okay? rather than to boast yourself. 
The simplest way to avoid this mistake is to refrain from boasting altogether. Follow instead Solomon's advice in 27, Proverbs 27 verse 2, he says this, beautiful verse. Proverbs 27 verse 2, he says, Let another praise you, and not your own mouth. A stranger, and not your own lips. So if you want to receive praise, let others do it. Okay? You keep on humbling yourself, others will praise you. That's what I can say. Fifth, misusage of our tongue is profanity and vulgarity. Television, movies, surroundings. If you go on a sports, you play sports with somebody, you, know, you will hear these things. And a lot of times, you know, when I get mad, I wouldn't say it. But because I heard it so many times, I would say, mm. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Because you hear it so many times and you almost say it in your mind. But some of, some of you from your BC days and it becomes your habit. I know a pastor, I would not mention a name, playing with his youth group kids. It's coming, they're playing together and he missed the last shot and lost. And can you believe he said a word that he should never, ever, 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 ever even think about? I would not even mention the first word, uh, first letter of the word. You know what I'm talking about, the worst <laughs> word that you can ever imagine. And this pastor said that in front of the kids. And everybody was just... <laughs> can, you, can you imagine if I say that? <laughs> oh, what, I meant, what I meant was, fine, fine. You know, something like that. You say, I mean, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> or foul, or something like that, instead of <laughs> other things. And <laughs> so he had to gather everybody, give a long lecture, and said, when I was your age. <laughs> Unbelievable. But to the wise person, cursing is neither attractive nor fitting. It is juvenile, ugly, a pitiful base way to express ourselves. Okay? We have a choice, remember. Uh, Proverbs 18 verse 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I pray that you remember the uh, Matthew verse in the beginning, as well as this verse. This is, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Sixth way to misuse your tongue is lies and exaggeration. Sixth way to misuse our tongue is lies and exaggerations. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19 says this. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. There are six and seven things that Lord hates in this passage. Okay? Listen to this carefully. Few things that Lord just hates. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Go home and read it. It says, it says that there are six things which the Lord hates, yet seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, Prideful eyes, lying tongue, tongue that lies, a hand that shed the innocent blood, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly, rapidly to evil, false witness who utters lies, false witness, and one who spreads strife among brothers. These are some of the things the Lord hates. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Make sure you check it. Man, God hates these things. Notice, notice that out of seven abominations of the Lord hates, the tongue is mentioned three times. Out of the seven things that God hates, okay, three of them concerning the tongue. And twice specifically for lying that really bothers the Holy Father. That's what we're saying. So why doesn't it bother us as well? Why are we so lax about telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I mean, even in the court of law in front of a judge, we have to tell the truth, but nothing but the truth. How about Almighty God? How much more before the Almighty God? Okay? We need to, we need to think about this. We really think about it. Why? 
when Christ, why in the world does people in the world laugh at Christians? Think about it. Do you know why people in the world laugh at Christians? Because we are not respected and we don't act respected, respectably. We lie and there's no integrity in our lives. That's why people laugh at Christians. You know, years ago in America, they would quote preachers in the newspapers, you know that? Because their words were so trustworthy, so wise, so they consider, they would put ministers' words, this famous minister said, and that would be like the truth from the scripture or from God or something like that. And that would be on the newspaper. Can you believe that? How about now? All, only news line that ministers grab in this society are sins, sexual immorality. These days, every time I talk to people, I say, you know, I'm a minister. People say, oh, you're like that guy and talk about the TV, famous TV evangelist. No, I say, I'm like the Billy Graham. <laughs> Not like that, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's just unbelievable what kind of reputation we have in the society. You know why? Because of our tongue. Integrity. Lack of integrity. Hey. But one of the few people that society respect, a person like Billy Graham, when he talks, people still listen. Hey. Everybody respects him. Why? Because what he says, integrity, how he lives, speaks louder than his words. So when he says something which is less than his actions, people listen. Hey. Uh, let's go to some bright side. Good use for our tongue. So we feel like repenting. But let's go to some good use of our tongue. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. Okay? And when we think about our tongue, it's only two ounces of muscle. <laughs> two ounces muscle. So powerful. Can kill, it can give life. And Luke chapter 6 verse 45 says this, Luke chapter 6, 45. Why do we say the things we say? Is it just mistake? Bible does not say that. It's not just mistake that we make. Of course, we all make mistakes. But there's something in us that makes us say those things. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Let me just read this verse. It says, the, the good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good. So good man out of good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good. And the evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth what is evil. For his mouth speaks from what, uh, that which fills his heart. Why do we say certain things? Because of the condition of our heart. Okay? That's what the scripture says. So if there's filth in our hearts, you will say the filthy things. If, you, if there's hatred, if there's uh, jealousy, Lack of love, whatever, then what comes out will be gossip, slander, on and on. So you want to get to know a person, listen to the content of what they say. You know, there are people, when you spend time with them, it just edifying. Just brings you closer to the Lord. Have you ever been with that kind of person? I have been. Now I'm going to talk about a few, few of the people, of course. But let's go to the good Good usage of tongue. First, good usage of tongue is wise counsel and sound advice. So when you really listen to the Luke chapter 6 passage, it could, our tongue can be this, this two ounce uh, of muscle. Two ounce muscle can be used for good or bad. Good powerfully, bad powerfully as well. So it's a powerful instrument no matter what. If, you, if we had time, we would read James chapter 3. It's like... Whatever we say, it's like it catches fire. It's amazing power. Okay? So, wise counsel and sound advice. The mouth of uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 31 says this The mouth of the righteous flows with wisdom. Okay? Proverbs 15, verse 7 says, The lips of the wise spread knowledge. Proverbs chapter 12, 
verse 15. It says, a wise man is he who listens to counsel. Okay? Just there are those people you spend time with, and they just edify you in your life. Uh, uh, some of you know John Swanson. You know, I don't like to mention that many people's name, but <laughs> I just have to mention his name because he's going to speak sometime this semester. And when you come, you will listen to him. <laughs> and just a couple weeks ago, he's, uh, he used to be the uh, director of Campus Crusade for Christ, CCC, in this town. And we shared office with him, and we would always talk. We would always talk, and he learns maybe think a little bit from me, <laughs> looking at the bad things that I say and things like that. But and I would learn 99% of the time, I would be learning from him, just talking to him. And it's been, he's now, you know, we, we are supporting him as a church, as he's studying full-time at Trinity, and uh, we just... A couple of weeks ago, I just had lunch with him. It's been a long time since we had lunch together. So I had lunch with him, and just in an hour, you know, we were busy and all these things. He was just sharing. He was just basically sharing what was in his heart. And when he shared, just within that hour, okay, few convictions came into my, my, uh, my heart and my mind. Just within that hour. He, he was just, he was not showing off. He was not trying to teach me. He was just sharing what was in his heart. And when those things came into my mind, it just gave me new insights. Okay? And which triggered me to, you know, think about a few messages that I preached the past few weeks. So thank him next time you see him. If you're blessed by some of the messages you, you've heard a couple weeks ago. But just within that hour, there was edification. Within, within our conversation, it brought me closer to the Lord. Do you have those kind of people around you? Or are you that kind of person? If younger guys come to you and talk, if you're an older guy, when they talk to you, are you do, they, do they feel closer to you? Do, they, do you feed them a meat from the scripture, insight from, from quiet time, or whatever it is, a new thought about God, heart attitude, experience? That's informal discipleship. I wish I'm like that. I don't know if I'm like that or not. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'm, if I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people all the time and God is giving me this amazing opportunity to talk to you every day. I really wonder if I'm giving you some sort of meat, if God uses me in those times to edify you, get you closer to the Lord. I don't know if that is happening. I wish it is. Are you, when people talk to you, do you get closer to the Lord? Hey, okay. Is there people who would give wise counsel to you? A few prerequisites, okay, of them. When you ask for advice to certain people, let me, let me say a few things. Okay? That they must have. They must have heart of love. Or if you were to give advice to somebody, if you are asking somebody to give you advice, prerequisite of advisor is that number one heart of love they have to have love okay tough as well as tender love tender love is 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 that love when you feel discouraged that will embrace you tough love is that love that when you are struggling when you are sinning in your life that he will give you tough love little spanking with words that is necessary do they have a heart of love? No, another thing is, if you were to be an advisor, do you have mind of scripture? Heart of love? Mind of scripture. Do they know the Bible? Do they live it? You know, you know who are the people who have wisdom? Not the ones who know a lot about the Bible, but few things really applied in their lives and experientially they understand and the conviction that comes from it. Those are the advisors. Heart of love, mind of scripture. Number three, as, as I just said, is experience of life. Heart of love, mind of scripture, experience of life. You want to be a good advisor, counselor? In your everyday experience, see the Bible, see Christ. Compare your life to the scripture. Ah, this verse, I understand this verse now. Saturate yourself with the scripture. Then your experience are interpreted through the scripture. You gain amazing wisdom. Okay? Fourth thing that you absolutely need if you want to be an advisor for the glory of God is knowledge of you. 
okay, knowledge of you. Meaning, if you are the advisor talking to this person, you have to know this person. Okay? Do you know that person? Do you know that person that you're giving advice to? A lot of times, different kinds of people go to other people for advice. And they might be wise people, they might love you, they might care for you, they might have a lot of experiences, but they don't know you at all. Okay? And if you don't know them, be careful in giving advice. Good usage of tongue. Second, good usage of tongue is reprove and rebuke. Or I say spiritual exhortation. Reprove, rebuke, or spiritual exhortation. Proverbs 27, verse 17, or uh, verse 6, sorry, says this. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. Do you have those people who may be around you, who may kiss you? But scripture says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. If that person genuinely cares for you, would at times, even though it may hurt you, give you some information that you might need, even though it may cause you to dislike them. Do you have those kind of friends? If you are the person who is giving this rebuke, few things you need. You need love. Okay? You need love. Okay? Not only love inside, but they have to know you love. So are you, are you going to rebuke somebody? You better have love, and that person had better know you love. Another thing is humility. Love and humility. Genuine humility. Knowing that you are not any better than them. You have so many other areas that you wrong them, or you wrong, you sin in your life, but you want to tell this person for this specific occasion, for this person you want to say it. Love, humility. Another thing that I need to have is compassion. Compassion. Okay? As I said, if you really listen to what that person says, verbally and non-verbally, understanding and try to feel, you get to have compassion. And with compassion, your information becomes counsel. Okay? The information that you give becomes counsel. It becomes healing counsel. Okay? If you really love the person, you will rebuke somebody reluctantly. Think about that. If you really care for somebody and you're giving rebuke and counsel to someone, you will reluctantly say some things. Not only reluctantly, you will say reluctantly with tears in your eyes. Then it will heal. It becomes a medicine. And ultimately, temporarily, you might get far away, but ultimately, you're going to get closer. I think about some of the people that have given me advices in my life. And right now, I thank them so much because it has made me better minister and better person. Okay. Third way to use our tongue, good usage of our tongue, is encouragement encouragement. Proverbs 16, verse 24. It says, pleasant words are honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Think about that. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. I, I can remember a few times <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that is best in encouragement, but a few times when I do encouragement, I've seen God use it in, in different ways. I remember one other person that had graduated from our church. And I, I, guess I, I guess I said, you know, I passing words one time and said, and the person made a lot of mistakes in his life. But I said, and he came to me and apologized for all the mistakes that he made, but I said, you know, so-and-so, the reason why we keep on training you, we keep on talking to you, teaching you is because, not because of who you are now, but because of your potential. 
I didn't say with tears. <laughs> I didn't say with warm heart and all these things. But that's what I said. A couple years later, that person came to me one day and said, can I meet you? I said, okay, what do you want to talk about? And the person came all the way to my office and we talked and said, you know, you probably, you might not remember, but you said once that the reason why you keep on training me and you never give, give up on me is be, because of my potential. And I thank you for that. And went. So I thought about it. Wow. First of all, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> but second of all, it meant, what am I saying? It meant a lot to that person. I remember uh, just this past summer, I went to a revival meet, or retreat. And, you know, there's, there's this younger preacher. I wasn't speaking. I just visited the retreat. And this younger, younger person younger than me, we've known for many years. And uh, I'm, I'm older than this person. And this person was speaking. And so when he spoke something about it that, you know, it just blessed me so much. It just really applied to my life. And I believe God spoke to me through that person. So after the... Uh, retreat, I, I went to the speaker and said, hey, thanks. That was for me. You just got me. It seems like I've been punched left and right. I got to repent now. Thanks. <laughs> you know? And then I, I went in. And a little later, that person came and said, you know, oh, he was so excited. I, you, you mean you got blessed? Yeah. <laughs> you got blessed. I didn't know what he meant, but I found out that he was, talk, he was talking to all his youth pastor friends that, hey, Min got blessed through my message. Min got blessed through my message. I go, <laughs> it's God's word, isn't it? <laughs> what am I saying? I think to that person, it was such encouraging fact that somebody that he quote-unquote respect or somebody who's older was blessed. I remember going through a similar occasion one time when I was uh, speaking, when I was this is before CFC, so when I was a younger minister, I mean, still a young minister now, but even younger minister, when I was younger, really young, just a couple years ago, real young, <laughs> was that when I was speaking in this retreat, I was really nervous. The reason why I was nervous was when I was speaking, there was a, a minister that I knew for probably uh, for 10 to 15 years. This was, this was a famous minister. This year... Uh, and the man's be going to become uh, 60, okay? And he was sitting in the congregation, and he's someone that I dearly respect, and you know, you know how he feels? Like, you know, I'm, I'm about to speak the Word of God to this person, one of the best expositors that I've ever seen, was sitting there listening to what I'm about to say. So I was nervous, and as I said, and I, out of hundreds of people, I was just thinking about that person for some reason. You know how that feels? So after that, I don't know how, what I said and all these things. I was so depressed, you know. I can't believe, I got to look, look at God, not the person. I'm, I could say that, but I was thinking about the person. And I'm being honest. So after a message, I got so depressed. I didn't know whether I was, out or, I was screaming and things like that. I don't know what I was talking about. But as you know, talked about that and came down. And the person came to me, hey, I never thought scripture that way. That text that way. Thanks. I didn't know what to say. I was so happy, but so encouraged. And what that means to a young minister at the time was very encouraging. How about you? Is it usually critical things that you're thinking about? Or is it, do you want to encourage? Your intention is to encourage, help, edify. Okay? Good usage of our tongue. Not excessively, as, I, as we talked about before. Not to praise uh, just so that they will like you, but sincere compliments, encouragements. Those people who get jealous a lot, this is one of the key. You don't want to get jealous, one of the keys that give. Try to learn to give sincere compliments. Okay? It'll help your jealous heart. When you see that person, encourage them, bless through that, it'll help your jealous heart. We need to learn how to encourage. Fourth way of Use, using our tongue in a positive way is witnessing and teaching. Witnessing and teaching. 
Proverbs chapter 10, verse 20, the tongue of the righteous is as, as choice silver. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life. Okay? Chapter 13, Proverbs, verse 14, it says this, to turn aside from the snares of death. To turn aside the snares of death. So as we said, as we talked about Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. You know what I, as I was thinking about this message, you know what I, what I thought about? Having tongue within our lips is like having a million dollars. You can use it for good, to build our church, something like that. Or you can use it for bad. Having a tongue is like having an Aladdin's lamp. You can use it for good, or you can use it for bad. What are you going to do with it? We need to continue to cultivate our hearts so that good things will come out. Make a habit of good usage of our tongues so that God can use it to bring glory to Himself. Let's pray. Think about this, this couple of truth. Okay? For every careless word, for every careless word you speak, you'll be judged with it. For every careless word. I don't know about you, but I, had, I have to repent a lot giving this message. I, w- I was seriously thinking about skipping this message because it, it's too painful for me to give this message. Because my job is to speak to people, speak about God's words. So many principles that I do not live by. We need to examine ourselves. Okay. And it says, we are the voices of God, representing God, giving the message of Christ to people, and that's why we exist in this world. What kind of message are you conveying with your life, especially with your tongue? What kind of things are people hearing? If people are around you, what kind of effect do they, does it bring you? Your presence, your words, your counsel. What kind of effect does it bring to people? I read evaluations of our church. All of you will fill out at the end of the semesters, small group evaluations. And one other thing, always that comes up for past five years, which is not only CFC problem, but every organization in the school, as well as every human being organization, is that problem is gossip. Nothing different from non-Christian organizations and Christian organizations. You gossip. And when you gossip, you are shooting an arrow at our brothers and sisters. Whom we need to love, whom we need to die for. It hurts Christ. It hurts the body. It hurts me. It should hurt you. Okay, let's hold on to this truth today. Every careless word that will be judged with. And it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. God can use your tongue to save souls. God can use your tongue to heal people. Maybe God is using these words to heal people right now. The wounds that you gave with your words. 
for every careless word that you'll be judged with. Okay? Let's pray for a few minutes. And ask the Spirit of God to give us a new heart so that what we say will flow out love for and love of Jesus Christ. Lord, help me to say what you would say to my friend. You know what I mean? Help me to say what you would say. Come on, people. Let's get rid of gossip from your heart. Let's get rid of gossip. Misusage of our tongue from CFC. Can we do that? I know it sounds impossible, but we're going to try. Let's pray for a few minutes and repent. Because for every careless word, you'll be judged. And we need to repent. That means we need to repent our sins of every careless word that we spilled that hurt other people. Let's pray for a few minutes.